Hi Speed Cubers. So I recently bought this, which is called a Karmagami, and you can see some other pictures of it over there. And in this video, I'm gonna unbox it. But I think this is the brand name, and the more generic name for this shape is called a Kaleidocycle. But where did I buy this? Well, I was in the Galleria in Houston, which is the biggest mall in Texas, and the reason I was there is because I was on the BFDI and Anemone Insanity tour, and you can see among all the cities on the back, the second one is in Houston, see? So anyway, I wanted to talk about this thing because I used to love these shapes back in 6th or 7th grade, and I used to think they were called hexaflexagons, but if you're a Viheart fan from the early 2010s, you remember that she made a video about hexaflexagons, but those things are actually flat. Like, they don't have any depth so to them because, well, it involves, like, gluing a lot of flaps of paper together. So now? it's not the same thing so as this, back, which has essentially six tetrahedrons that are bound together at the edges. So this... first, I guess I'll unbox it, you know, on screen here. And then I'm going to show you some work that I did um, when I was in sixth grade to show my appreciation for this shape. So first we're going to peel off whatever this is. This is like some, it looks like a credit card, but it's just more, it's like a holographic ad thing. Like what says one, two, three, four. It's a hologram. Okay, but what we really care about is this. So the important thing to realize is that these tetrahedrons are not pure, they're not regular tetrahedrons. They've been stretched vertically. And we do that because, well, the, the wider they are, the more like wiggle room there is. Oh my God. Okay. The more wiggle room there is for them to turn. Okay, here's... Here we go, first turns. Let's make my screen as big as possible. I'm nervous because I haven't turned one of these things in like a decade. Okay, my face has to be on this side. We're turning it, we're turning it. Oh wow, this actually turns very smoothly. Like there's no uh, lockups, no joints. And you might wonder like, why is this on my speed cubing channel? Well, I figured this is kind of like a twisty puzzle, you know? And you can think of it like there's a solve state. Right now, like all the designs look about the same, but. Let's pretend that like there's one side that has that's supposed to go on the outside. Maybe this is the solved state. So we have solved state, this is a plus two, this is a DNF, and then now it's a plus two again, and then it's solved again. Because there are four states of this puzzle. So, I mean, it's obviously there's no logic, like there's no complicated, this is like a trivial puzzle. There's just, uh, it's not going to be hard to solve. This is mostly just to like entertain yourself as you watch it spin. What's cool is, is if you look at a design like here, Notice how the blue is on the inside and the yellow is on the outside. Now remember this design. If I flip it over, like I do a Y2, and then I do two moves, so one, two. Now the yellow is kind of, well, it's kind of on the inside. It kind of inverts the triangles. Imagine you take all the triangles and you flip them. I mean, this is kind of like on the edge, these three edges that used to be the perimeter of the other hexagon. So that's pretty cool. So I give this a... Honestly, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because it just turns so well. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I think I'd prefer it if the designs were more, like, visually different. Like, right now they all kind of have the same rainbowy colors, but wait, hold on. But imagine if, like, one side looked, like, very watery and another one was very, like, sci-fi, high-tech, and another side was very rocky. Then it would be very obvious when you had looped through all four colors. And, okay, so now, now that we've played through this a bit... And we've played th with our hologram a bit. It's still really cool to look at, right? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. And we looked at this. It's time to show you what I did back in sixth grade. So back then, like I was saying, I was really into Viheart. Or somewhere around that time period, I was into Viheart. So I mistakenly thought this thing was called a hexaflexagon. But as we've already established, hexaflexagons are flat. Size and and like, I mean, they're also very interesting because they actually have, I think, six I different to one of your new sides or six different way, states you can put them in. Like, up. you can see there's different colors. Now there's it's a different shape, though. So maybe you can um, up okay, anyway, so if you go to Flash Player, I made this in early 2009. So this is Flash. If you go to htwins.net slash d-o-d-e, you'll go to this webpage that cannot be loaded because Flash Player is now disabled by most browsers, blah, 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 blah. But I still have Flash Player on my computer, so we're going to look at it. So back then I was really, really into origami of all, all types of different shapes. So there's tetrahedron, dodecahedron, cube, which I called a hexahedron just to make it look fancier, and then hexaflexagon. Now these two, the tetrahedron and cube, are boring. The dodecahedron is a little more interesting, and also you click on it and like it, it gives you instructions. You can see I did this 3D animation of a dodecahedron spinning. 
Um, I, I try to animate it manually. There's actually only like two frames, but then I did some trickery with like horizontal flipping to looks like look like there's more. Like I eyeballed it. Like I didn't do any actual 3D rendering. I just kind of made a dodecahedron in real life and try to spin it and draw what I saw. So that's why it's kind of like wonky. But I remember in fifth grade, I made like dozens of dodecahedrons for my friends in school. Like they would sign up to get a dodecahedron and I would do it. Now, um, I got these instructions from a book called Geogami. Yes, yeah, it says it takes 10 to 30 minutes instructions from Geogami. And then the other thing I want to point out is that, you know, you have to fold 12 different modules. Each module corresponds to one pentagonal side. And what's cool is that each module, well, it's foldy from BFDI. Obviously this isn't, oh yeah, see there's 12 foldies. See, there, there's three foldies intersecting. This isn't a BFDI channel. This is like pure coincidence. This came first, you know, this is like early 2009. So this came before BFDI, but foldy is obviously uh, inspired by something from my childhood. So let's do a BFDI foldy. This is just to prove to the non-BFDI fans. You can see how she's a pentagon with two flaps on either side. That's because we need two flaps to intersect the pentagons. And then you make four sets of three, that adds up to 12. And then you intersect them kind of like this. And I couldn't animate, like, see, see how simple that animation is? This is all 2D. There's no 3D rendering, of course. So then eventually I just put in text. This is basically saying, like, you guys got to figure it out now. Just kind of, like, logically stick it all together. And then you're done. So it clearly I was lazy. But the interesting, interesting option is hexaflexagon. Because, well, that's what this video is all about. So let's click. It's, oh, well, you can see when you roll over this button, it says it's the hexaflexagon that is three-dimensional because I was very aware there was also this two-dimensional hexaflexagon. So I wanted to like make it clear it's different. So I also did an animation of this with the, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This animation of, of the hexaflexagon spinning, I'm very proud of that because that's also like fake 3D, but I hate how it fades away after like three seconds. Like I really want to indulge in the spinning. Anyway, let's see how to make it. So click OK. To start, get a sheet of paper that's at least 5 inches by 12 inches. If you don't have your paper that big, you could try making it, or you could try, you could make everything 3 quarters the normal size, which makes sense. You just gotta, or like you, any proportion, you just need to keep the aspect ratio the same. Um, draw a line every 2, yeah, 2 inches to make 6 columns. Yeah, basically, uh, you have to make triangles that are a little wider than equilateral. So this, this is all just numbers, like, so here's the thing. When you follow these instructions, the triangles will be two inches tall, like side length wise, but they'll also be two inches wide from like middle to point. And we all know that like for a real equilateral triangle, if it's two inches here, it will be square root three inches from here to here, like width wise. So the fact we're going up from square root of three, which is like 1.73 up to two inches means like it would be like, imagine taking a pyramid. Do I have a pyramid? Oh, I do. So basically, imagine taking a regular tetrahedron, putting it on its edge so that like the vertical edge is like the rightmost, and then this horizontal edge is the leftmost, and taking it and like stretching it out by a factor of two over square root of three. Um, so we have six of those stretch out tetrahedrons. Okay, what is this? Oh yeah, I already explained it here. These aren't equilateral triangles. Yeah, it won't work. You'll see why soon. So anyway, you cut it out, that whole shape, and then now you get to draw. We're not going to worry about the cosmetics yet. I think we can explain it later. Oh yeah, I even said, now remember, it will be normal on one side, inverted on the other. If you don't quite understand it, don't worry. Wow, I was so comforting back then. So yeah, oh yeah, I, I kind of explained it all here. Yeah, draw your design on the top row of the triangles. Look at the video to see how to do it. So if you draw these kind of upward facing con concave things, in one view, it'll be create a hexagon. On the other view, it'll be inverted. So that's kind of like... Well, let's find an equivalent of that. So that would be like, well, maybe like this, this one. Do you see how it's like, you get this ring or like this kind of circular blob. And then if we flip it around Y2 and then do two moves, it's not a blob anymore, but it's on the outside. I think you get the idea. Um, okay. So anyway, you draw a few more designs because you have you know, four solved states. Because again, there's four sides to a tetrahedron. And then, oh yeah, the cool thing is that all the vertical folds are valley folds that kind of go concave. All the other folds are convex and they, they stick out. Um, so then I, oh, this animation took me so long to do. And actually, no, I remember like the first step of this was really hard, but then as I added more and more, it was easier. And this is fake 3D again. I was just kind of going as if, like, I feel like you can like just watch this and understand how it works. Um, but yeah, 
I, I think you can kind of see that now you have like this chain of six stress tetrahedrons and now you need to complete the loop with one last piece of tape. I think it's the ninth, I guess ninth piece of tape and you're done. Oh, that's it. So here's the thing. If you use regular equilateral triangles, which I tried the first time I wanted to make this, you can't contort it into a ring. Like when you try to tape the, the sixth, the final tetrahedron back to the first one, it won't close all the way. It's kind of like, it'll make a C shape, but it can't fully close. So by stretching them out, it, it gives them a bit more wiggle room to uh, complete the loop. And the funny, the fun thing is, did I, oh, I, did, I didn't show it here. The fun thing is you can actually um, make these more elaborate. Like imagine you, okay, basically you see, hold on, this shape, this kind of shape with six rows of four triangles. You can actually continue that further. So like maybe you have eight rows of triangles or 12, 10 or 12 rows of triangles. You can create more kaleidocycles of like higher and higher order. But when you make them, like when you add more triangles, you have to squish it more and more so that it doesn't end up loose. Cause you don't want, if you have a loose kaleidocycle, it just won't be fun to spin. So you have to experiment with it a bit. I think the ratio is always, of the original paper is always around five to 12. But yeah, I remember I made hexaflex or kaleidocycles that had four tetrahedrons or five tetrahedrons and you get to experiment or with like fourfold or fivefold fivefold art on all sides. Again, you always have four, you always have four like sides to the tetrahedrons because you're always playing with tetrahedrons with have four sides, but like you can have like five tetrahedrons. I think like you understand what I'm going at. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically it for this video. Um, uh, stuff like this makes me sad that Flash is dead because when I watch this, I can tell how much fun I was having. Uh, the tetrahedron tutorial is really, really bad. I tried to basically take the same form that was used to make the dodecahedrons and apply it for triangles, but it creates a very flimsy, ooh, very flimsy triangle. Like these flaps are like very weak, so it's not gonna actually stick together. You're done. Same with the, the cube. Uh, I would not recommend the tutorial for the cube. I'm just gonna go through it so that, you know, there's like evidence of it. Cause now that it's like flash player, this is sort of like the only way to archive you know, what I actually did back then, like a video, a YouTube video will probably last longer than an SWF flash file, which won't last very long either. So see, here's basically my attempt at taking that kind of pentagon with two flaps and transforming it into a square with two flaps. So you see the square and two flaps, and then you make six of them and then you kind of, yeah, you have pockets and flaps and then you kind of put them together. This will actually hold together, but you have to tape it because it's a lot looser, but you know, a couple years after I came up with this, I discovered a much better way to make a cube out of six sheets of paper. Like, it's hard to explain, but you basically, um, like I'm just gonna rip this together. Like basically, you have two rectangles that are like wider than squares, and then you interlock them like a plus, and then if you fold the flaps of the plus over like this, and like this, then you kind of create these, what I like to call staple shapes. And if you have a, a cube with six staple shapes, okay, see they're, like, they're staples, then um, you can interlock it in such a way that like the out, like every face, it goes like, if you look around, it goes over, under, over, under. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't want to do a, a, like a full tutorial here, but what's cool about making those cubes is that they can, you can make multiple of these types of cubes and latch them together because the, like the outside exterior of this cube is basically the, the same as the inside. They have these like protruding notches that will latch onto, it's hard to explain, but basically I think this tutorial is outdated and I would not recommend following it. Wait, hold on, I'm just gonna let all the animations play fully just for archival reasons. Um, wait, oh my God, I didn't even let this one play out. Okay, well that's pretty simple. Yeah, but you know, for someone who was like 11 or 12 at the time, I forgive myself for making non-ideal tutorials. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of the Kar Karma Gami that I got in Houston, Texas. And let's see, any, any final notes? No, I don't think there are. Thank you for watching this video. This is for the thumbnail. I'm posing for the thumbnail. Yeah, I guess you could try to speed solve this, but there's only four states, so if you scramble it, you hand scramble it, there's a quarter chance it's solved and there's a 75% chance it's a plus two from being solved or better. 
there's only a quarter, twenty five percent chance you end up with a state that is not like considered solved by any means. Okay, yeah. Thank you for watching this video. I'll I don't know if you want to get this file to like see what it is and you have Flash Player, just go to hwins.net slash dode slash do okay do okay hwins.net slash d o d e slash dodecahedron dot swf. That will download the file onto your computer like so. So now you have the SWF. It's only 64 kilobytes. Like, I love the tiny file size of SWFs, but you need a Flash Player to open that up, which most people don't have anymore. But, you know, yeah, it's there if anyone's curious. Thank you for watching this fun speed cubing video, and I will see you all later. Bye. I'm doing reverse now, reverse corner twisting. Yay. Okay, whatever. Bye. Oh, I wonder what, what would happen if you took six pyraminxes and glue them together in this way. Could you make a twisty puzzle that's also a kaleidocycle? Probably not, but that's an idea for you guys to try next. All right, see you later for real. Bye.